Leviticus 10, 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon. Here's where I want you to see it. And they offered strange fire. Somebody said strange fire. Y'all talking like you sleep. Come on and say strange fire. Before the Lord. Which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord. And devoured them. And they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron. This is the Lord that the Lord spoke saying I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me and before all the people I will be glorified how many know if you ain't sanctified you better sanctify him okay y'all didn't catch that he said and, and before all the people I will be glorified and Aaron held his peace and Moses called Mishael and Elspheth, the sons of Uziel and uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, and Moses had said, And Moses said unto Aaron and unto Eliezer and unto Athamar, his sons uncover, not, don't even mourn for them. Neither rent your clothes lest you die. And lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord have kindled. And he called not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation lest you die for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you and they did according to the word of Moses I don't know what to call this message I don't know what to name it but just to be in order would you look at your neighbor and say neighbor who put your fire out Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, who put your fire out? We're talking about increase, but you can't have increase without energy. You can't have increase without the substances necessary to push you and to provoke you forward. Nadab and Abihu were novice priests, the firstborn of Aaron the high priest. And in their naivety or lack of honor and respect of God's holiness, they took it upon themselves to offer up, here he goes, unauthorized incense and fire upon the altar of the Lord. This act offended God to the point that God's fire went out and devoured them and they died. Their actions were so egregious that Aaron, their own father, was not permitted to uh, mourn them, nor was anyone else permitted to mourn or give them a proper funeral. When we consider the text, we can clearly see that the violation of offering up strange fire shows us a spiritual principle which we fail many times to take into consideration. 
many of us in this priestly ministry, especially in the area of leadership, toy with what should be treated with respect and honor. Could it be that there are many so-called ministry leaders in the body of Christ who have brought strange fire in the service of the Lord. See, see, a lot of us don't have discernment to tell the difference between the real fire and strange fire. Look at your neighbor and say, is it real fire? Or is it strange fire? Just because it's burning don't make it legitimate. Just because it's hot does not make it legitimate. It may feel like the real fire, but it's illegitimate. This is the danger because fire is fire, isn't it? But the problem is that God has distinctly determined that there is a fire that comes from the altar of God. And then there is fire that comes from illegitimate sources. In the first official day of the Israelite system was to be employed, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, failed to obey the proper practice God commanded. The offense is especially described as the offering of strange fire, penetrating too far into the sanctuary. We have those that consider themselves priestly or of the priesthood that are overextending their boundaries. They think their gifts and their titles give them the right to be disrespectful and, and, and adversary, and adversary and adversaries of the very people that God put in their life to help them go where God has called them to go. They failed to obey the proper practice that God had commanded it, offering unauthorized coals from outside of the temple area, offering incense that did not contain the proper ingredients, and offering incense at the wrong time of the day. In Leviticus 16 and 11, Aaron shall bring forth a bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. Notice in the text that the first element of sacrifice was not the sacrifice for the people, it was the sacrifice for the priest. The priest first had to offer sacrifices for his own sins. That means that as a leader, he was not exempt from sin. And if he was perfect, he would have never had to offer up a sacrifice in the first place. Can I put a pin in that? See, the problem with us, we're living in a rebellious generation who now are so smart that they can use their leader's weaknesses and flaws and humanity to disqualify themselves from following. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. Uh, they, 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 no, they can't disqualify the leader, but they're, they're, they, they are so busy trying to, it's like a child or when a, in a house with a parent and the child sees flaws and mistakes in the parent and then the child says, I can, I, I can be rebellious and smart mouth and I don't have to pay any attention to you because I saw you do something. 
that I didn't like or that may have very well been wrong. He shall take, I'm going to go there in a minute, he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire off of the altar before the Lord and his hands shall be full of sweet incense but being small and bring them to the veil. Can I preach in here? And he shall put the incense upon the fire of the Lord and the cloud, the glory of incense may cover the mercy seat that is on the testimony that he not die. And he shall take the blood of the bullock, sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat. Eastward before the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle of the blood which his fingers seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering for the people. Now he's going to offer up the, 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 the sacrifice for the people. The blood within the veil and do with the blood which he has done. The blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and their transgression and all of their sins. God gives Moses a, an Aaron strict instructions about the sacrifice of atonement and how it should be handled. You got to understand that you can't handle holy things any kind of way. Uh, you got to handle holy things based on the principles and the instructions of the scripture. Paul says if I run, I must run according to uh, the rules. And if I think that I'm faster, but because I'm talented and better I can break the rules and still win the prize he says you're well mistaken you may be fast you may be talented you may be gifted but that don't mean you got a right to use your abilities to do what you want to do and break every rule every protocol every who to call everything that God said we have lost our mind we got apostles with two people everybody's a prophet everybody is everything archbishop and don't even have a choir and then we got people that endorse folk who can wear hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of jewelry in front of a, 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 a garage and call it okay see I don't blame the fool to get the position I blame the people that put him in there because if you're going to put somebody there you ought to have better sense than to put people that don't have no sense in the position in the first place can I talk to you see we have to talk come back and raise a standard for this thing we call the kingdom we have to come back and reevaluate what we're doing it and why we're doing it God's intent for his people was to know the importance of their sins being forgiven and their ability to honor and appreciate the fact that they served a God who was eager to forgive their sins and at the very core of worship and therefore uh, which should have not been taken for granted. Here we see that Aaron, the sons of Aaron, acted out of a fire and I want you to hear me the reason I'm talking about this as strange fire because what I see here is that Aaron's son operated out of what I will call tonight the zeal without knowledge see we don't know the difference between zeal and what comes as a birthing of God's calling on our life. Uh, it, it is interesting that zeal, can I talk to you, is just simply a passion, a fire that is fooled, fueled by the wrong source. Can I slow down? Uh, it is, it's, 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 it's zeal but it is fueled from the wrong source. It's, it's coming from an unauthorized place. Just as Aaron's son's fire came from an unauthorized source. Zeal is an act of passion. And that zeal many times is fueled by the flesh. See, that's why people can't listen to authority. Because they have a zeal to do ministry that they're not prepared for. 
Okay, y'all, it's going to get quiet. Simply speaking, zeal could be seen as a person trying to do God's will out of their own energy, out of their own knowledge, out of their own expertise, out of their own motives, out of their own desires, rather than an act of ministry that is birthed out of the spirit and because you have come into and saturated yourself in the presence of God I want to talk to you for a minute because so many people that call themselves servants of the Lord are offering up strange fire moved and motivated by a position a check Uh huh. Moved by a position, moved by their lust for a check, an opportunity to be seen, a certain status, and a certain platform. You ain't got to say amen. Zeal in itself is not wrong, but when that zeal is a result, watch this, of fleshly attempts to accomplish a holy work. See, see, they had a zeal. These boys were priests. They did have the priestly office. They were anointed as priests. They were under, under, under Aaron's tutelage. Are y'all hearing me? Why is it that they had such a zeal that they would not consult? with the leader that was put in their life and with their own attempts to act in the thing that they call godly run to that altar without fire that was unauthorized it is interesting that they did not consider or sit at the feet of their own father to get instruction and direction you can have all the gifts you want you can have all the titles you want you can have all the pedigree you want but if you don't have the presence and the knowledge that comes through generational inheritance and if you're not sitting where somebody can put something in you and challenge you and correct you and instruct you and soon as somebody say something to you you mad and flying off the handle with your anointed and gifted self I must warn you that you need to check your fire look at somebody said check your fire check your fire Paul says that no good thing dwells in the flesh even flesh that is trying to do a good thing a lot of us are trying to do a good thing in the flesh and because we're trying to do a good thing we think it's okay to do it in the flesh but we don't realize we're unauthorized to do it out of the flesh because they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth many of us are trying to do a good thing out of our flesh Aaron's sons trying to do a whole Holy work out of their own individual flesh. The need to act in ways that promoted who they were and not who God is because when you want to promote God you're not going to get into self promotion you're not going to get in a place where everybody got to look at you you're not going to get in a place where your identity is in how many likes you get and how many Facebook people check on you and say I like you you're going to get it because you've been in the presence of God. You're going to get it because you laid on your face. You're going to get it because you listened to somebody. And after you have suffered a while, after you have been corrected for a while, after you've been trained a while, then God will cause you to be strengthened and perfect in all your ways. Their attempt was one of flesh we see it in this modern day church we don't know the difference between flesh and God we look at flesh and run around the church after flesh we will, pla we will pack out the churches of flesh we will pack 
check out the churches where people run around with talents and gifts that don't even have a theological foundation for the message that they are preaching. Pride and bringing attention to themselves rather than God's plan that was given to Moses and Aaron. Can I stop right there for a minute? We always hear people talking about burnout. Somebody shout burnout. But I want you to understand when you are in the service for real and you got what you got from God for real ain't no such thing as burnout <laughs> yeah uh -huh. I got burnout uh, this ministry is burning me out uh, these people are burning me out uh, I'm sick and tired of the ministry uh, you better watch your mouth uh, because guess what it ain't your ministry uh, in the first place uh, if you called yourself uh, then they ought to wear you out uh, but if God called you uh, he is going to sustain he's able to keep that which is committed unto him so then let me slow down because burnout in ministry comes many times because we're trying to operate in the things of God out of our own ability out of our own strength out of our own intelligence or a desire to be in a position see what we don't understand flesh cannot handle the weight of the anointing. The weight of the anointing has to be carried by something more than your talents, gifts, and intelligence. Can I talk to you? That's why so many preachers commit suicide. That's why they're going crazy. That's why they're on Xanax. That's why they're ready to kill and take their life. Because somewhere along the line, they grab some strange fire and tried to do the work of the Lord. Uh, come on somebody. That's why we get in ministry and we ready to quit after two years. Because you're working with some strange fire. That's why we can't take nothing in this generation. Uh, if they don't like us, if, if, if people hurt our feelings, if people do something that we don't like, I'm quitting this ministry. I'm going to find me another job. That's because you are working with the wrong fire. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, who put your fire out? Shout glory in him. And so let me close. Because we put too much emphasis. And I, I'm, I'm educated myself. I, I don't go around talking about my education. I, I just, I, I went because I wanted to go. And when I went, I had been in ministry for 30 years and done more than the professors that was teaching me. Matter of fact, when I got in school, I taught them something that they didn't know. Why? Because it ain't about what's in your head. It's what's in your heart. And a lot of us know those people that got stuff in their head but ain't got Jesus in their heart. They can't handle the fire when it comes. In a place of prominence we'd rather be than in the desire that Jesus commands saying if I be lifted up I will draw all men unto me. The problem is if you get in the ministry in flesh, then flesh got to keep you. Can I talk to you up in hell? If you get in the ministry with flesh, Facebook gonna have to keep you. Instagram gonna have to keep you. You gonna have to do all kinds of crazy stuff to get folk to follow you. We're living in a season when the church is full of clowns. A bunch of clowns. A bunch of jackasses. A bunch of people that are just putting on show. And we think because folk are flocking to them and running behind them, we think they doing something. But when you ain't got no sense, you will follow anything. When you don't go to Sunday school, you will follow anything. When you don't have a Bible study, you go. You follow anything. When you don't have no devotion time, you will follow anything. When you don't get on your
your face, you will follow anything. Follow anything. And then we got a nerve to sit here and feel some kind of way because we don't have the ignorance behind us that other folk have behind them. If you really going to compare yourself and your anointing by how many stupid people follow you, you're in trouble. Jim Jones had a word and he took 600 people to an island and they ended up drinking poison and killing themselves. Everybody smart is not wise. Shout glory in here. We fail to realize that we cannot perfect that which is born in the spirit after the flesh. We cannot depend on our own gifts and our own intelligence and our own degree. It's good to have them but don't depend on them. Look at your neighbors. I'm glad you got your gifts but don't depend on them. I'm glad you educated but don't don't depend on them. I'm glad you got uh, networks and connections, but don't depend on them. Some of us are wondering why we can't get out of the hole right now. It's because we have not recognized that we're depending on strange fire to do a holy work and the attributes of the flesh and expect to see the power and the move of God. All of these things are typical and the result of offering up strange fire. Can I talk to you for a minute? In Romans the 10th chapter and the first verse can we go to the Bible? Because a lot of us are listening to sermons and they don't ever go to the Bible and when they do do it they don't even exegese it. They isogese it. They make up foolishness. They, they crisscross the scripture just so you will holler. But can we go to the Bible? The Bible says brethren my heart's desire is that Israel be saved for I bear them record that they have the zeal uh oh there it goes they have the zeal of God but not according to knowledge they have been ignorant of God's righteousness and now they're going about making their own rules have you ever seen the bastard spirit that's in the church right now where people will make up their own rules and then say the Lord told them to do it and don't have no authorization by no authentic ministry to do what you're doing and will declare and swear that you are doing the right thing. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Can't nobody say nothing. He says they are ignorant of God's righteousness going on to establish I'm going to slow down son uh, let's slow down a little bit and he is going to establish their what? their own righteousness, watch this, have not submitted. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. He says Israel is producing a strong fire. Because they've established their own righteousness. They have not submitted to the righteousness of God. They have not submitted to his order. I know y'all hate that word. They have not submitted to their leader. They have not established their, uh, they have established their own feelings about what is acceptable to God. They have the spirit of Cain and insist on doing their, it their way rather than God's way. Mm -hmm. They, 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 they don't need authority and leadership. Uh, Philippians 3 and 5. Can I read a scripture? Circumcised on the eighth day. Uh, Paul says, I was the stop of Israel. He says, I was of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of Hebrew standing. He says, and as touching the law, I, I was a Pharisee. Now watch this. But in my zeal, 
in my zeal with my strange fire I persecuted the church see I am in I am in I am afraid can I can I tell you why I'm afraid because we got people who with zeal got a hundred thousand followers and all they do is persecute believers you ain't gonna talk to me up in here they make a mockery out of God's people they laugh at God's people but I heard Jesus say the le- what you've done to the least of these my brethren you have done it unto me I know the man messed up I know the man didn't do everything right I know the man may have made some mistake but at the end of the day he's God's man and who am I to God judge God's servant you put your mouth and we sit there and we watch it on YouTube it's a disgrace family business ought to stay in the family but when we get on public uh, forums and put out this cesspool and don't cover God's people and don't protect our family I don't care what you do you my family my job is to cover you I'm not going to cover you in your wrong but I'm going to cover you until you get right look at your neighbor and say cover me shout glory in hell look at your neighbor and say if you can't cover me get off my road if you can't cover me get out of my face if you can't cover me lose my number if you can't cover me just wave at somebody and say cover me cover me cover me if you see me in trouble cover me don't put me on CNN don't put me on Facebook don't make a mockery of me on Instagram because in the end of the day every dog has his day shout glory you may think you're riding high today but tomorrow you don't know what you're going to face you better stand on the Lord's side why you got a chance instead of talking about him you ought to say Lord have mercy I plead the blood God I don't know the circumstances but God cover him Lord keep him Lord shout glory in him so out of their own zeal they are destroying the credibility on the church and then they're calling the righteous bishop Khan. they are killing us there's not enough that Hollywood makes every preacher look like a pimp it's bad enough that Hollywood makes every preacher look like some kind of punk it's bad enough when Hollywood laugh and scorn us but when we start doing it to ourselves we have to be insane somebody lift your hands and shout glory in here I'm going to tell the truth tonight if I don't never tell it before we have to understand he said I, I killed the church with zeal so when you talk about and put down and uncover your leaders and the people around you you are killing the church and let me tell you something he said touch not my anointed and what it ain't your anointed it's his anointed and do my prophet no harm look at somebody and say I ain't gonna harm you cause you might be saved for real look at somebody and say I ain't gonna harm you 
because you might be saved for real. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, he says, listen, uh, because I uh, was operating in my own zeal, uh, I became destructive uh, just like Aaron's sons. Uh, he said, I will cause us uh, to offer up strange fire and out of my, their ignorance, uh, they established their own righteousness. Uh, I heard the word say, uh, and they knew not Joseph, uh, Joshua, nor did they know the elders of Israel. Uh, and every man did what was right uh, in his own eyes. Uh, uh, they got unauthorized fire uh, and ended up being destroyed. Uh, Cain offered up an unauthorized sacrifice uh, and God refused uh, and demanded one that would please him. Uh, to which Cain objected, uh, killed his brother, uh, and in ended up a vagabond. Uh, how can you say you love God uh, and kill your brothers? Uh, how can you say you love God uh, and put their sins on front street? Uh, how can you say you love God uh, and wish evil uh, on your brother? Uh, shout glory in hell. Uh, Paul says, uh, I was using and operating in strange fire. Operating out of my own human capacity. I was operating out of my own pedigree. Stock of Israel, tribe of Benjamin, Hebrews of Hebrews, touching the law of Pharisees, concerning zeal. I persecuted the church, touching righteousness, which is in the law. I was blameless, understanding that this is strange fire. I counted it all loss. I heard the voice of Jesus, and when Jesus called me I said come here Paul I gotta show you the things that you must suffer for my name's sake he said I counted it loss for Christ and then he says in 1 Corinthians the second chapter and the first verse he said I brethren when I came to you I came not with excellence of speech I didn't come out of man's wisdom but declaring you the testimony of God for I determined not to know anything save Jesus and him crucified all I know is Jesus and him crucified I'm buried with him in burial I'm buried in baptism I'm raised with Jesus from the dead he said listen my speech was not with enticing words with man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit of power that faith shall not stand in the wisdom of man but in the power of God Psalm said I'm a stranger unto my brethren I'm an alien unto my mother's children for the zeal of thine house has eaten me up and the reproaches of them reproach me are falling upon me yeah he says that he told them you took my house the house of prayer and you made it into a house of pimps you made it into a fashion show you made it into a popularity contest you made it into a place of pride and arrogance but he says he took the cords and he drove them out of the house of God we need some prophets and we need some apostles and we need some men and women of God that are going to get them cords and go back to swinging saying that the zeal 
now the Lord has eaten me up. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what happened to your fire? Who put your fire out? Look at them and look at them for real and say, neighbor, I need to know where did that fire go? Who put your fire out? You were on fire one time. You were on fire one time. But now you done cooled off. Now you done got lazy. Now you can't put up with nothing. Now you can't go through nothing. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Lord, send your fire. Lord, we need your fire. What happened? We talked about water baptism. We fighting over Jesus name. We talking about a, a, a baptism in the Holy Ghost. But even the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Bible said cloven tongues like that's a fire set upon them. A lot of us got a ghost, but it ain't the Holy Ghost. Because when the Holy Ghost come, he gonna bring some fire. Somebody shout fire! 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 He said that, that I indeed John said it like this. Hold up. John said it like this. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that coming after me is mighty than thou that whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and I said he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. How do we have so much Holy Ghost and ain't got no fire? Where's the fire? Where's the fire? Where's the fire? The saints used to come in the house of God and stay around the fire. The fire would come. The fire would fall. They leave the house of God on fire. On fire. Praying for folk. Laying hands on the sick. Leading people to Jesus. Telling folk to the utmost. Jesus saves. They were laying hands. They were getting filled with the Holy Ghost on the street, in their house, in the Walmart, on the corner store. The saints were on fire. But this modern church, we don't start playing with a strange fire. Look at somebody that says strange fire. I, I, can I close? Them revelations picked it up. And John said that this is Satan, the Laodicean church. Is, is you've been talking good. You've been a true witness. I know thy works. That you're neither cold or hot. He said, I'd rather have you cold. Uh, than to be lukewarm. He said, I'd rather have you hot rather than lukewarm. Because if you lukewarm, if you lose your fire, if you lose your fire, I don't like cold food. I don't like no cold cuts. I like my food hot. And if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Shout glory! Shout glory in here! Shout glory in here! Can I finish now? 
Jeremiah had a conversation with God. He was called to a ministry that the folk didn't want to hear, but he preached anyway. Didn't get no offerings, but he preached anyway. Didn't get no billboard, but he preached anyway. Didn't get no fame, but he kept on preaching. When you got fire, you going to preach in season and out of season. When you on fire, you'll preach to one just like you preach to a thousand. When you on fire, nothing can stop you from doing what God said. Can we talk for a minute? And then I'm going to get out of here. Uh, John, Jeremiah. Can we relate to Jeremiah? Don't sit in here and act like you're the God's man of strength and power. All of us sitting in here over the last 36 years, I've had some conversations just like Jeremiah. I would come and preach on Sunday, but on my way home, I would say, oh Lord, you deceived me. You promised me your help. I said, Lord, I thought you said you were anointing me to preach your gospel, but you messed me up. You got me out here. No members in the church. Folk acting crazy. Don't nobody want to hear my message. You jacked me up. You put me in a lose-lose situation. I'm damned if I do. I'm damned if I don't. I give people my best and they spit in my face. The folk I help stab me in my mouth. Yeah. I had to have some conversations. Touch somebody and say, can I be real? I've had some real conversations with the Lord. You couldn't hear it. You couldn't listen because I was embarrassed at the things I said and at the things I thought. I had to give them messages. I had to talk to them. He said, you let these people scoff me and mock me. You told me I called you from your mother's womb. I knew you before you came into planet earth but now my name is a household joke somebody lift your hands right there because there are times in your life no matter what your ministry is people have made you feel lesser than made you feel like a joke and then you got these vlog vloggers and media people and YouTube that will tear you up spit you out and stomp on your life it ain't fair it ain't fair tell somebody it ain't fair but it is God look at your neighbor and say neighbor he never promised you it was going to be fair but he promised you he was going to be God he's God when I like it he's God when I don't like it he's God when I'm winning he's God when I'm failing if he can't be God in my valley he can't be God in my mountain look at somebody and say listen when you got the fire the fire will work in the valley just like it works on the mountain can anybody hear me fire will keep you through depression fire will keep you through anger fire will keep you when your enemy 
enemies come up against you fire fire somebody lift your hands and shout fire fire he said lord yet on every side i hear them whispering they whispering about me they're making threats and i am afraid they say i'm gonna wait until you slip i just want to watch you monty until you slip i won't come hear you preach i won't listen to what you got to say but i will show up when you slip i'm not coming to pick you up i'm coming to make sure you're dead but if god be in you the same god the same god the same god that took you down is the same god early 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 one sunday morning he got up i said he got up they laughed at him they talked about him they scorned him they beat him they hung him but when you got the fire when you got the fire when you got the fire they can put you in the fire but you're coming out without a singe you're coming out the ropes are burned you're coming out your suit is clean you're coming out and your flow shines coming out giving God all the praise and the glory shout glory in hell I wish I could preach this thing. I wish I could preach it like I feel it. Jeremiah said, I quit. Jeremiah said, I'm throwing in the towel, car. Jeremiah said, I ain't doing this no more. I'm sick of this ministry. I'm sick of these Negroes. I'm sick of taking this mess. I'm going and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to take my ease in Zion. I'm going to watch Netflix. I'm going to watch some series. I'm going to sit there and binge. I'm going to the beach and I'm going to put on my bikini and I'm going to get me a suntan. I deserve a vacation. I'm going to sit right here in my ease. But I heard him say as I talk to him it was just like fire I said it was just like fire it was just like fire shut up in my bones I can't hold my peace I can't stop he been too good he brought me through too much I got the Holy Ghost and fire shout glory He said so I'm closing now he says let me tell you I tried to quit on God but when this thing is real can I talk to somebody you in here tonight and you saying what's going on and sometimes it's going opposite of what you think you don't know what to do but you know this that there's something on the inside that's working on the outside it ain't no joke 
because you got saved for real. When I left the altar, I left with my heart changed. I left with a new mind and I left with a new attitude. Lord, they tried to humiliate me. Lord, they tried to tear me down. But it's just like fire shut up in my bones. He said, I will gain. I will sing. I will thank thee. Oh, Lord, I'm not thanking him because everything has been right. I'm not thanking him because 37 years have sent me some cloudy days. I'm not thanking him because everything is wonderful. But I'm thanking him because when I look back over my life and I really think things over, God has been good to me. Yeah, I can't quit now because the fire is too hot. This fire is burning. This fire is heavy. This fire won't let me quit. This fire gave me a mind to keep moving in every situation, in every circumstance. This fire I want to tell every pastor and every minister in here I don't care if you're on social media get the fire back hey Tom I know shy folk that didn't have no education they had the fire folk that didn't have no social media they had fire folk that didn't know what to do they had fire they were dumb as two bricks but when they said shun no 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 shy when they had it in the belly y'all know one of them belly things it don't come from your head but you reach way down into the bottom of your spirit and out of your belly flows rivers of living waters go ahead and say it ain't me go ahead and say they buried me but I guarantee you this fire is going to get me back up shout glory shout glory God said tell my people they working with strange fire tell my singers they singing with strange fire tell my pastors and my ministers they preaching with strange fire he said they don't need a new technique they don't need a new situation all they need is the fire of the Holy Ghost burning the fire that won't let you sleep the fire that'll make you go into the hedges and highway the fire that will make you preach in the middle of the grocery store the fire that will make you lay hands when nobody's looking the fire that will make you cast out a devil and dare him to come back that fire is the fire we need lift your hands and shout glory Aren't you tired of being cute? Ain't nothing getting done. Ain't you tired of being pretty? Ain't getting nothing done. Ain't you tired of going to get new logos? Ain't crap happening. Ain't you tired of sitting in your church in your three-piece suit? 
waiting for folk to come kiss your feet. Ain't you tired of trying to be a celebrity? Aren't you tired of being in the circus? Aren't you tired of having the herd mentality? What you gonna do about it? You gonna have to lift your hands and say, Lord, send your fire. Lord, send your fire. Lord, send your fire. And one thing I want you to do, I want you to leave Holy Convocation 2022 on fire. I want you to leave here without the brakes. Take the brakes off. Take the mess off. I want you to tow that fire, that strange fire, throw it away. I said, Lord, I'm going to stay here until you feel me. Fire, Lord, send your fire, Lord. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Lord, I need your fire. Say, Mande Kostarabaha. I done been through all of these changes jumped through all these hoops done backflips done all of these things trying to make myself significant I preach to others and then I got to go take medicine to calm my nerves. They don't know I don't want to be there no more than they do. And the only reason I'm going to church today is because I'm the pastor. And I got to go because that's my job. You got pastors in this room that hate to go to church worse than you do and then will talk to you about not going. You know what happened? Monica, they lost the fire. Now we sit around in the church. Strange fire, singing songs with strange fire. Praying with strange fire. Dance with strange fire. And we struggle to get people in the church because the saints ain't got no fire. But remember, the fire starts with the priest. And your folk ain't on fire. Because you ain't on fire. That spirit that's on you done got on them. And you complaining about them, but they ain't got no deliverance. Because don't no deliverance come with no strange fire. I heard a pastor and I'm not judging anybody car. Said somebody called him, said one of the members and somebody said they had a demon. He said he called somebody else and told him you go. One preacher met a demon. The demon said, I ain't going nowhere to the preacher said, Well, stand there then. Cause when you ain't got no fire. You just a tinkling cymbal and a sounding brass. And what make it so bad? You've been operating with strange fire so long, you don't even know it's strange. You sitting there getting excited about sermons that are birthed out of strange fire. But tonight, I'm not asking God for money. 
I'm not asking God for a new car. I'm not asking God for more people in my congregation. I'm saying, Lord, send the fire. If that's your prayer and you mean it tonight and you sick of yourself and you sick of dealing with imitation, phony crap and you wearing yourself out and you depressed and you on pills and you got anxiety and you don't know which way to turn but you shouting every time the doors of the church open, I want you to get to this altar. I want you to find the first place you can get. Oh yeah, see, we, 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 we need to start moving to the altar now because guess what? We need fire in our churches. We need Need them. Oh, oh, so y'all got the fire right? Church is struggling like they ain't never struggled before, but we got fire. Ain't nobody getting saved, but we got fire. It's okay. I done delivered the word. I ain't, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna play. I need some people that really want God, and they need this stuff done. In their life, don't wait for somebody to call you. Don't wait for somebody to pray for you. You know God is talking to you. Find this altar tonight. Find this altar. Find this altar. Ain't no superstars. I ain't got the fire, but he got the fire. Sheba bakase keba bahasa. Shere didi ando se keba mama ando. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Shaba kase keba baha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know you ain't won a soul in ten years. You ain't ministered no matter for real in 15 years. You ain't bringing nobody to church. Ain't nobody getting saved. Ain't nobody getting filled with the Holy Ghost. But you just glad going to church and just shouting and playing these games. Lord, we need your fire. Lord, send your fire. I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. Come on, lift your hands if you at this altar begin to praise God and believe God all over this all over this room. Lord, send your fire. Lord, send your fire. Lord, send your fire. I can't do this. I'll go crazy if I keep trying to do this. I'll lose my mind if I keep trying to play church. I'll keep I lose my I ain't saying you won't save, but where's that fire? Where's that zeal? Where's that zeal that's with knowledge? Where's that fire that used to make you? go the extra mile used to make you run for Jesus used to make you get out and the burden was on your soul you had to go knock on somebody's door you didn't have no witness team but you got out and you went to start telling folk Jesus loves you and you begin to pray for folk and tell them that God will change your life you begin to let God use you because the fire is burning in your soul I don't care who you are I don't care where you've been. Ain't nothing you got that the fire can't burn. Ain't nothing you dealing with that the fire can't break. There's nothing you dealing with that the fire can't burn up. There's nothing you're going through that the fire of God cannot destroy in your life. I want you all over this church begin to lift your hands and say, Lord, send your fire. Lord, send your fire. Lord, send your fire. No more no shire. Lord, send up no shire. I want it. Not just the Holy Ghost, but I want the Holy Ghost and fire. Fire that will burn up depression. Fire that will burn up every situation. Fire that will make me a vessel of God. Everything I touch, everything I touch, everything I touch, because my hands are anointed, because the fire of God is burning in my life. The fire that burns infirmities, the fire that destroys every yoke, the fire that brings healing, the fire that burns, the fire. Lift your hands and say, Lord, 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 don't let this just be another convocation, but let it be a time when the fire falls. I was there. Fire. 
but the fire of talk on my shot. Shut it up. Put your hands on the stomach. Yeah. I'm playing. Y'all think I'm playing. Fire! Fire! Lift your hand. No, sin. sin it, Lord. 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 Ain't playing no more. Sin it, Lord. Sin it until deliverance come. Sin it until your glory come. The fire. I need it, Lord. I need it, Lord. I need it, Lord. church to catch on fire. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if we could just get two or three of us to catch on fire for real, we'll turn the church, we'll turn our community upside down. Wave at somebody and tell them, is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you?
tremendous gifts, tremendous anointing, a legend. You command just because of your influence and the anointing on your life. You, you, you just, I hate to use this term, but you ever watch the Godfather? Huh? You the God mama. And God says, you ain't finished bringing people together. But the Lord told me to tell you, this time when you bring them together, you ain't bringing them together for what they think you bring them together for. They think they coming to impress you and to sing and do melodies. And right in the middle of the gathering, the fire is going to fall. Lift your hands and say the fire is cold. The fire. I rebuke death. I rebuke infirmity. I rebuke it. Yeah. You're just getting ready. Your ladder shall be greater than your former deliverance. Prophetic anointing. I command the fire. Lord, I, I, I got gifts. I don't need gifts. I got talents. I don't need talent. I got friends. I don't need no more friends. I need the fire. It's 
Stop focusing on YouTube and Facebook and that's all that's good. Before you walk out of your office, before you get to your church, say, Lord, please send the fire. Before you leave your home in the morning on your way to church, on your way to the house of God, you ought to say, Lord, if you don't do nothing else, send the fire. Send the fire. Send the fire. They ain't got to lay hands on nobody. The fire just fall. Hey, Boko Shtarava. Shekanamande Shikeba. I ain't got to struggle, the fire just fall. I ain't got to preach long, the fire just fall. I ain't got to go through no whole lot of uh, uh, gymnastics, the fire. fire. And let me say this. Storms can blow so hard in your life challenges can come so hard in your life that you will find yourself without even realizing it trying to operate with unauthorized fire strange fire but you got to come back and you know it starts with us bishops it starts with us pastors we got to catch on fire. Huh? Come here, quick. Orlando got a lot of entertainment. They got a lot of rides and a lot of people go there to have fun. You ain't in Orlando. You and Venture ain't in Orlando to have no fun. You in there to be the fire. Folk come in that house of God. You don't want to care how much you sing. You don't want them talking about how good you played and how beautiful the ministry. You wouldn't want to say, when I went in that house. Something happened. When the woman of God was singing the fire. Worship was going on right in the middle of the worship. An explosion took place. Fire fell and folks started getting delivered and healed. Lord, send your fire. Send your fire. That's my prayer tonight. Lord, the church is in trouble. Lord, they're making us out of laughing stocks. Lord, they don't believe you're real no more. And Lord, we repent. For using strange fire. Thank you for not killing us. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Because we should have been dead and gone. Our ministry should have folded up. And if it was not for your grace, they would have threw us away. But Lord, send your fire. We need your fire. We got too many issues to do it ourselves. We can't do it alone. We need your fire.
help us. Help us. Help us to return to the altar with the fire that only comes from you. And Lord, if you don't send it, we don't want it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Everybody standing. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. We thank you for this week. We thank you because you love us so much that you speak to us and you want us to be all that you have called us to be. We pray tonight that every person here will leave this room desiring to experience the fire that comes from you. Folk will get saved, healed, feel that folk will come from far and near because they want to be around the fire. Thank you, Lord. Now let us leave this place but never your presence. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and evermore. In Jesus' name.